Gentlemen, we are making pink flowers and uh, it's not even anywhere close to Valentine's Day, so I don't even have that to fall back on. Um, the reason I'm making it is because uh, I live in Korea and recently it was cherry blossom season. Now, if you have never experienced it yourself, it is incredible. This is uh, this photograph was taken about a month ago. Uh, this was when they were in uh, in bloom. Uh, so basically, what it is is for one week, approximately one week, uh, these trees will blossom these white, wonderful flowers, and it is for one week only out of the whole year. It basically it's the welcoming of spring. And, uh, and what's so cool about it is that the tree doesn't have any leaves on it. It's just the flowers. So it's a striking appearance. And it's, uh, it's for obvious reasons, it, it's like in a lot of Asian, um, I don't know, I was going to say literature, not literature really, like imagery. Um, it's, I think it's the national tree of Japan, but it's distributed through a lot, a lot of Asia. I think it, there's... It's in Europe and America as well. It's sort of been spread out throughout the whole world. But it's uh, it's just an amazing experience. And it's for one week as well. And uh, and I remember at first when I saw these uh, these cherry blossom trees, I was like, oh man, it is incredible. And why can't they be here all year? Like, I mean, it's so cool. Like, why is it only for just one week? It's such a waste. But in a way, that's part of what makes it special because it it forces you to sort of get out there and enjoy it. It's like, uh, I don't know, it's a very, um, it's, it's a yearly thing. It's like Christmas, the Christmas lights appear and it's just like, you know, you can sort of get into it. And it's like that time of year where the cherry blossom trees come out and you just get really excited when you see them. And so, um, so I, I remember actually taking this photograph uh, either it was this one here or another one. And uh, I was holding the iPhone in my hand and I thought, I have got to make a tutorial on this. I just remember thinking that. And so that's where we are today. So um, so we're going to be using these reference photos that you can see right here. Um, I think there are actually a, uh, a couple of varieties of cherry blossom trees because uh, I had a look online and there are some really pink cherry blossom trees, like super pink. So um, these ones here are obviously quite white. Um, I think maybe depending on like how long they've been in bloom for will depend on how pink they are. But anyway, the finished result is obviously uh, one that is very, very pink looking. Um, but yeah, actually, and before we continue, I uh, I thought I would actually just bring up a point because uh, I've, I've got to talk about this. Um, if I can actually find it. Oh, where was it? I should have had this ready. I'm so unprepared. Uh, I, I just want to uh, just want to show you this picture here. Okay, so this is uh, this is like the park, and there's a lot of cherry blossom trees around and stuff. Okay, I just want to zoom in here and let's just check out what's happening. See how many cameras and phones there are in just this one shot. Uh, it happens every year, cherry blossom season. Wherever you go, like wherever there's like a lot of the trees everywhere, there is just cameras everywhere because people know that in one week they're all gone. So everybody wants to capture it on their phone, on their camera, whatever. And just have a look, this is just one tree and just have a look, okay? So we've got this couple here, they've got their camera, phone, whatever. You've got somebody in the background with their arm taking a photograph as well. This lady here, I'm pretty sure she's holding a camera as well. She's got a phone there, she's got this massive tablet, phone. I'm pretty sure she's got a camera in her hand there. She's got a phone there. Pretty sure she has a phone in her hand there. There's a phone in the background there. Girl walking in the background has a phone. She has a phone. Uh, and then these guys over here have a phone as well. And this is just one tree. I mean, <laughs> it's just mental. It's like, it's one of those things where you almost want to just take a photograph of the people and not the actual subject. Same as, uh, as recently, I went to uh, a beach in Korea and it's like this one good beach in the whole of Korea. And, uh, I just stood on the shoreline and I just looked down it and it was just people lining up with their phone taking selfies, just photographs of themselves next to the water. It's just the funniest thing. Anyway, so I thought I would just show you this photograph because I just, I thought it was funny. Um, anyway, in this tutorial, just to give you a rough outline of exactly what we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be modeling the flower um, and then we're gonna be modeling the branches 
and then applying the materials, very important, getting those photorealistic looking materials with textures. We're gonna be doing the lighting and rendering, making it look like it's outdoors with the sunlight and the skylighting and things like that. And then we're gonna be doing a little bit of post-processing as well to give it that final kick to, uh, to make it look really special. Um, I'll show you what the finished scene looks like in Blender. So this is it right here. I'll show you from the uh, from the camera view. Um, this was a I had a I had a go at making some petals sort of fly through the air. So I've got these. Uh, this is a different version, but I decided to go without the petals because I thought it looked uh, a little bit cleaner without them. But anyway, so this is uh, this is what the scene looks like. So believe it or not, these tree branches are not connected in any way. Um, so you might be wondering why not? Why haven't we just made a tree? Well, for two reasons. One, making a tree would be a lot more work because you'd have to use a script or some other thing like that. A lot of modeling, a lot of work for almost zero payoff. Um, and also you would have a lot less control over where everything is in relation to the camera. So the way I've got it set up at the moment is uh, it's basically, it's very carefully planned. I did everything here pretty much deliberately so that this flower here is the focal element, um, you know, using the rule of thirds and things like that. And then on the left hand side, you've got this out of focus, um, this stuff here on the left hand side, which is, yeah, it's out of focus. And it's sort of like, it's sort of flowing back into itself. And it's sort of like, um, it's sort of framing the scene as well. And so there's like a sky outline, like around this flower here. So because of this silhouette, your eye is sort of drawn to this flower here, the, the contrasting colors of light and stuff like that. And so um, basically by, uh, by doing everything manually and like manually positioning the flowers and these branches and um, wow, big old long turd happened to uh, to get in there. <laughs> I'll show you how to make that as well. That's a tree branch, but it, you know what it looks like. Come on. Um, but yeah, so I'll uh, I'll be showing you how we do all this kind of stuff. Anyway, that is the finished scene. So I think we can go ahead, open up a new scene in Blender. Cool. So first things first. Let me just hide all this stuff. I should say this tutorial is uh, is one that will uh, take quite a little while to complete. So I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if this one goes on a little bit. Uh, so I'll do my best to try and uh, do, it, do it as quickly as possible. And uh, I've also got a few stories I thought I'd share uh, whilst we're doing some of the more boring tasks. But anyway, let's get, let's, uh, let's get on with it. So first things first, we're gonna be making uh, the petal. So I'm gonna go ahead and load in a plane. And then, so that we're modeling the petal according to how a petal actually looks, what I'm gonna do is load into the background um, the texture that we're gonna be using. So this texture is one that I got off cgtextures.com. It's this one right here. Now the CG textures one actually looks like this originally in this yellow sort of flower with a bit of shading and stuff. I went to Photoshop and I edited it to remove some of the shading, um, made it pink and also straightened it out and stuff as well. So if you wanna download my version of that texture, you can do that. Um, so anyway, we're gonna go ahead and load that in and I'm gonna set the size of that image back um, in the backdrop to one so that it now, look at that, fits the plane quite well. Okay, cool. So first thing I'm gonna do is subdivide this, let's go three times like that. And then I'm gonna turn on proportional editing and make sure it's set to sharp fall off. And then what I'm gonna do is just drag these corners down and then using the mouse wheel to sort of adjust it as we do this, um, just like that, basically. So sort of making it so that it sort of falls in and around. I got messages going on. I'm not sure if you can hear it. There's a horn going on outside, car horn, car alarm, which is very fun, I suppose. Okay, so I'm just stretching these corners out just to fit the rough sort of outline of a uh, of a petal, really. So what I'm going to do with this part, I'll turn off proportional editing. I'll make this flat. I'll turn the proportional editing back on, and yeah, I'll just fit it so it's sort of like that. And actually, I guess this one here could be a little bit straighter. So yeah, something like that I think is pretty good. All right, awesome. Okay, that's a pretty wonky looking um, 
petal. But basically what we're going to do with this texture is we're going to use it in the, um, what would you say? It's in the, we're going to be using the transparency of it so that we'll get this sort of like jaggedy looking type edge there. That's the, uh, that's the plan of it. Um, the also, uh, I'll load in a reference image, which, um, you guys can use as well. If you're watching this on Blender Guru, you can see all the links where you can download these textures and stuff like that. Um, Anyway, going to load in a reference image, which is this guy right here. So if we just load in this image, you can see that our actual um, flower, it's got this sort of like little dip in it like there. So what I'm going to do to do that is at the top here with this top vertice selected, I'm going to press V, which is going to rip it. And uh, you don't really need to do anything else other than that. And then when you press control two, that'll turn on subsurf a subsurf modifier, you can see that it's now created that little dip there for us, that little nook there. So that's basically what that's done. And you can see that each of these petals are kind of different, like some of them actually bold, bulge outwards, but most of them sort of come inwards. Anyway, cool. Oh yeah, and if some of you are wondering why I made my end result so pink, um, from what I can tell, looking online at different reference photos and stuff, cherry blossoms, I think there's a different there's a few different varieties um, and some of them are really pink. So that's the look that I wanted to go for, even though these ones here are white. So anyway, okay. So we want there to, uh, for the petals, we want them to be sort of rounded, like they're concave. So I'm gonna hold down Alt and then right click on these edges here, one by one. And then I'm gonna push G. And then again, using that proportional editing, making sure that we're on the sharp fall off. Um, I'm just making it so that it's concave, like that. Ta da Wow, it's really loud. I it's uh it's coming into uh sort of hot weather here in Korea, so I've got my window open and uh it's eight PM at night, so I thought that it would be quiet enough that I could do the recording for the tutorial, but I don't know. There's a lot of noise outside. We'll see how it goes. Um, anyway, so it's nice and concave like that. I guess at this point, actually, we should be doing the uh, UV unwrapping. So from where we're at right now, let's just go press U and then select unwrap. And actually what we might do is go U project from view like that, just so that we're at the yeah same sort of look. And then I'm gonna load in that textured petal that we went off for our reference. And I'm just putting that in the background there. And so what I want to do is I want to fit this to that basically. But one thing to note though, is that this area at the top here, because we've got this little dipped in area, um, that area needs to be underneath. Like, uh, so if I just sort of grab this portion right there and then go proportion, there proportional fall off. Let's go smooth. This needs to be down at least down there. I found because what happens is because there's this little lip here in the, uh, in the texture, if you've got this part that's dipping in, what you'll get is what looks like this kind of like jagged edge that kind of like sticks out there. Um, it's sort of hard to describe, but anyway, I'm just making sure that it's like that. And then that will fix that problem there for us. So anyway, so that's fine now. Everything is good. But you can see that the mesh is sort of like a little bit larger than the actual shape of the petal, which is actually how we want it. So that's fine. Now I actually want this petal um, because this petal texture isn't an actual cherry blossom petal. Uh, cherry blossom petals, I think, are generally a little bit uh, smaller width-wise. So I'm just shrinking it along the X axis. So S, then X, and then I'm just shrinking that inwards. So at this point, you can go ahead and delete the background image because we don't actually need that anymore. And then if you want to also, you can sort of scale this in just like this. Because basically what we're going to do is we're going to start to form the rest of the flower. And if you've got this part here, which is bulging out a little bit too much, then you can get problems um, with that. So I'm just trying to uh, sort of factor that in. I have practiced this tutorial many a times to make sure that I do everything right. Um, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> the next part is the hardest part to get right. So I'm just trying to... Uh, Make sure that these things are fixed before we get into it. Okay, cool. So what I want to do is I want to get this origin point right there. I want that to be at the base of the um, petal. 
So if I just move this to be there, roughly, like so, and now what I'm going to do is just scale that up to be about that shape, that sort of um, angle, I mean, sorry. So it really depends on how open you want the flower to look. Um, if you want it as open as like these ones here where it's like full bloom, then you can obviously have it stretched out. But I want mine to look sort of like semi, like it's just like freshly bloomed. So at this sort of angle, like that. And then what I'm going to do is hit Alt D. And Alt D is different than Shift D because it's now actually copying those um, object parameters, I guess you could say. So that when you edit this, it will now edit that as well. Anyway, um, so I'm just going to rotate this. So you can see the, uh, the problem that we're having is that the petals are overlapping. Anyway, so I'm going to rotate these around just like this. Okay. All right. So this is, this is the hardest part is getting it so that it looks good without this, uh, this overlapping nonsense that we've got going on at the moment. So, um, if you have a look at, you can't really see, excuse me. <clears throat> if you have a look at some actual reference photos of, uh, cherry blossoms, you'll see that some of the petals are sort of like inside like this, like that. And then some are out outside like that. And so it's sort of, uh, sort of varies a little bit, basically. Um, now you can see these edges here. That's what's kind of annoying me. So I want to uh, drag those back, perhaps make them a little bit flatter. I'm not really sure how we're gonna fix this. <laughs> Again, you know, you can practice it as many times as you want. And then you record the tutorial and you look like an idiot every time. Oh yeah, I think that's, that's not too bad actually, that's okay. So really what we want is uh, this center piece right here. Um, we want there to be like a hollow point, like it's sort of, so that's the that's why we made it so that we, we pushed Alt D so that now they're copying the same parameters as each other. So I've grabbed this little point right here. And uh, actually I think it would have been better off the way it was before where it was slightly curved inwards because you want there to be like a, a slight sort of hole basically. And then I want it to be going in a little bit. So let's drag that in because basically with the camera so close to the flower, the way we're going to arrange it, um, you're going to be able to see any sort of problems that are happening. So out of this, we're going to have uh, obviously, uh, what do you call these things? Little nectar bars. <laughs> it's not the word for it. What do you call it? The little stems that stick out? I don't know. Anyway, they're going to be coming out of the center. So it's going to hide some of it, but you want to sort of cover your tracks as best as possible. Anyway, I think that is pretty good. So what I'll do now is the, oh, no, actually one last thing. Um, you can see looking at our reference photo here, that the petal isn't perfectly smooth like we've got it here. Um, you can see it's got all sorts of little rumples and all sorts of other things happening. And like this one here, for example, you can see it's like fairly crinkled. Um, now you can't fix that with just like a simple bump map. You've got to do change the actual geometry of the mesh. Um, so I'm not going to go ahead and edit it and try and do that myself because there is a much better way, which is to use a displacement modifier. So go ahead and add a displacement modifier and then click new texture like that. Now, one thing I'm gonna do is instead of making the texture coordinates local, I'm gonna make it according to an object. So if you're not sure what I mean by that, just follow what happens. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and add an empty like that. And then here with our petal selected, I'm gonna change this texture coordinates to object. And then from the list, select empty. And then now what you'll see is that if I move this empty, you can change the displacement like that. So what that means is that provided this, that all of these petals use this same object, um, you know, for the displacement, it means that each petal will have a unique displacement basically. Um, so first things first, let's turn down the strength of this because uh, it's far too much. So just turning that down to about there, I think is pretty good. And by the way, the texture for the displacement is up here in the texture panels. So if you wanted to change that, I think for mine, I used um, like 0.35 and then four displace, four depth like that, something like that. Um, it's sort of, it really depends sort of how rough, oh, that's right. I also used subsurf level three. 
which is how you get that nice sort of crinkled look. There we go, let's let's increase that now. So something like that. I think that looks pretty good actually, it's not too bad. Cool, awesome. All right, so now because we've got subsurf and oh okay one thing also now is a good time to address it turn down your view of your subdivisions otherwise later on it's going to get really slow because we're going to have lots of flowers so turn down the view to be one or even if you want to you can turn it off so that it's really low poly but i think you can leave it at one and it's fine anyway so what i want is i want to use this same settings that i've just applied there to all of these. So it'd be time consuming to have to add a displacement for all of these one by one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all of these like holding down shift like that and then select the last one that we've just done then push control L and then select modifiers. And what that'll do is it'll now copy that modifier that we just had for all of the pedals basically. So now you can see you move around that empty and um, it's giving us all completely different displacement, which means that if I now duplicate that petal to make a completely different flower, you can see that if I just turn this up, that even though that's a completely new petal, you're getting completely different um, displacements, basically. So that's why using this empty object is better than normal. Anyway, we're sort of dwelling on this for a little bit longer than we should. Let's carry on. We're gonna go ahead now and do the materials for our flower flower petals. So we're going to the node editor, make sure it's the material node editor, and we're gonna add a new material. Okay, so we're gonna be using the diffuse shader for the most of it, but we're gonna be um, fusing the diffuse shader with a translucency shader. So go ahead and add a translucent shader. And then what I'm gonna to do to combine the two of those is use an add shader. So to explain what I've just done, basically the diffuse is a basic diffuse shader. There's no reflection, no nothing. And then a translucent shader allows light through it. And then by using an add shader node, what that will do is it will um, basically allow light to pass through it from the back whilst also being viewed perfectly normally as a diffuse shader from the front. That's when you use an add shader basically. It took me a really long time to figure out how to make a translucent object like that and uh, the add shader node is the way to go. Anyway, so we wanna add, uh, load in our image texture. So loading this in, and we're gonna put it into the diffuse input and the translucent input. And we're gonna go ahead and use that same texture that we just used before. Now, because that texture is a trans, like it's a PNG, transparent PNG, um, uh, we need to basically take advantage of the fact that it's got an alpha channel. So what I'm gonna do here is add in a transparent shader like that, and then add in a mix shader node, drag it in right here, and then put this into the top input like that, and then take the alpha, the alpha output of that image texture, and then put that into the factor input. So now if we have a look at this now, oh, it, we should actually save this before we continue because uh, yeah, otherwise there's gonna be some problems. So let's find a place to save this. I'm gonna call this tutorial. Good, I don't wanna lose everything we've done. And go rendered view and there you have it. So as you can see, uh, this is what it looks like without the, translu the, the transparent effect with it because we, we had that image texture um, like the, sorry, the, uh, the, the mesh actually bigger than the texture itself. Um, you actually, you need to have this transparent shader in there in order for it to look right. Anyway, I just thought I'd just show you what those two look like, like that. So you can see looking at it from underneath, you have, you have that translucency coming through of that flower petal, which is good. Uh, but one thing to note is that with the translucency, we, we don't want there to be the same amount of light that passes through from the front as what comes through from behind. Generally, as you can see here, the light that comes through from the back is a little bit less than what you get from the front. So from the front view, you can see the sunlight hits the light petal really brightly, but then from the back, it loses some of its... Um, what would you call it? Some of its energy, I guess. Uh, some of the light energy. So what I'm gonna do to counter that is I'm gonna add in a hue saturation node, which you wouldn't think we would use, but we're gonna use that. And then what, what that has with it is this value. 
So the value is basically the darkness value. So if I now turn this down, you can see that the light that's passing through it is now becoming less and less. So now viewed from the top, you should see uh, it's a lot brighter and then viewed from underneath, it's a little bit darker. You can't really tell properly because we haven't got proper lamp. So I'm gonna delete the default lamp and let's add in a sun lamp. And let's just, uh, I don't know, just rotate it a little bit, I guess. And then I'll set the size of that to be 0 0.02 so that we get some shadows coming through. And then let's take a look at it when it's rendered. Okay, so there we go. So now you can actually see properly. So now underneath that, that, that's what that looks like. So that's the kind of effect that we wanted to go for. Also for the diffuse shader, turn the roughness up to 0.2. Now roughness will give it a very slight... Um, bumpiness to it on the microscopic level. So it's for things basically exactly like this, where you've got sort of like a fuzzy sort of texture to it. So it should technically give it a kind of a velvety type texture, which is basically perfect for petals essentially. So yeah, anyway, I think we can go ahead and uh, continue on. <clears throat> Did that editing seem seamless? Yeah, because I just had dinner. Not even kidding. Ah, cool. You know what else I realized? We're coming on 25 minutes in this tutorial. And that is an embarrassment. I apologize. We gotta, we gotta speed this up. First things first, um, what we're gonna be doing is modeling this stem that you can see. Ooh, there we go. It got an even better angle. This sort of weird starfishy looking thing. Nature is weird, isn't it? Like this is ugly. It's just alien. It's bizarre. Look at it. Look at that. It's horrible. So we're gonna model it. So first things first, we're gonna load in a circle, which you wouldn't think we would do, but we are. And we're gonna set the amount of vertices for that to be five, like that, because there is five petals. And I'm gonna scale that down. And uh, also I'm gonna view it from this angle, just so we can see it a little bit clearer. And it's, you don't have to squint so much. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and what I'm gonna do is extrude upwards like that, and then scale it outwards like this. And you might be wondering what on earth we're doing. It's all gonna make sense soon, so just hold on to your hats. And what I'm gonna do is push V, and that will rip the, uh, whatever you call that thing. We're ripping it, okay? And then I'm gonna rip that one right there. And then if I grab both of those vertices, then hit S, then point one, I have scaled it in like that. Then, oh man, sorry if this is disorientating for you. I really do apologize. Um, yeah, so we're gonna do that for all of these right here. So I'm just gonna rip like that, then grab, ooh, oh man, <laughs> S.1, okay, and this guy, V to rip, S.1, and then V. Oh, we got the wrong one there. Yeah. S.1. And then this one, S.1. Okay, so what that has done as is it has created that that you can see right there, which looks pretty horrible. Okay, but when we add the subsurf modifier, it'll look a little bit prettier. I promise you. I promise you that. Um, so I'm just taking this circle here and I'm going to extrude that down. And if we just bring back in this part, you can see that it's sort of, uh, it's sort of, uh, well, sort of the, okay, this one you can kind of see a little bit better. Most of them sort of curve in a little bit and then bulge out and then go back down again. So I'm gonna, let's just sort of curve that. So this is the bit that's curved in and this is the part that's gonna start to bulge out a little bit. So this is the center and then this is gonna go down and then this is going to be the stem the width of the stem. So how thick do you want it? Yeah, about that thick, yeah. Pretty, mm -mm, no, that's, that's too thick, that's too thick. Let's scale that down a little bit more. Yeah, all right, so that's the stem. Okay, so how long do you wanna make the stem? It's up to you. I'm gonna go about that, which is pretty exact, isn't it? And then I'm gonna hit Control-1 and that is gonna add in our subsurf modifier. Make sure the uh, rendering amount is set to one because uh, the scene can kind of get out of control if you're not careful. So I'm gonna create a loop cut there just so it looks a little bit neater. And then I'll create a loop cut at the bottom as well because what we're gonna do next is add in a solidifier modifier. 
And the reason we're doing that is because I want here, I want there to be a bit of thickness. So I'm just going to increase that thickness amount. And I'm going to place that above the subsurf modifier. So now we have what looks like a little star. Okay, cool. And I'm just going to grab these areas here and I'm just going to pull them out. Sort of like that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Pretty good, pretty good. Oh yeah, look at that. That actually looks not bad. Huh. What do you know? You know, it really is a gamble whenever I'm doing these tutorials. I don't know what it's going to look like <laughs> until I see it appear. So I'm pleasantly surprised, surprised when things actually turn out right. Okay, so it's coming along pretty good. All right, now for the coloring. Because there's soup, there could be a time where part of this mesh is in frame. So I want there to be some color to this little bulbous little stem here. So the best way I found is to actually texture paint in our own little, yeah, this texture that you've got right here. So what I'm gonna do first of all, I know this might sort of drag it on and I, I, I do apologize this tutorial if people are out there going, gosh, this tutorial is boring. It's gonna be like an hour to make cherry blossoms. I apologize. I'm just trying to do it the right way. Anyway. So I'm just, uh, I, I created a, uh, a seam there and I'm just going to UV unwrap it and then move this along a little bit. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is load in a, uh, a background, like an actual photograph. Oh, not a photo. What is it? It's a picture. Okay. So you've got to start with something. So, and, uh, the color I'm going to give this, I'm going to go about 0.2 like that. And then I'm going to go green like that. So the base color is a darkish green color and that's going to be the stem. So I'm going to hit okay. And there we go. Okay, so what I want to do is I just want to paint this area up here basically purple. So that's pretty easy to do. Let's go paint. And then let's go like this sort of color. Something like, I guess something like that. Yeah, uh, a little bit more red, I think. Something like that is pretty good, I think. Cool. You know what? I think it's story time because I think it's getting on the boring end of things. Uh, I remember the other, uh, when I was a kid, it was weird. I was reading some thread on Reddit on like, what's some weird stuff that happened to you when you were a kid and now you recall and now you look back on it and it's kind of freaky. Uh, and I, I was like, oh man, some of these people had like messed up childhoods. I didn't really have any kind of a weird experience when I was a kid. And then I remember, uh, yeah, I did actually. Um, I remember once, I think I was on the Sunshine Coast, which is like, sort of near Brisbane in Australia, for those of you not familiar. Uh, and I was with my parents and my family and we were out going shopping and it was like sort of like an open market sort of shopping area kind of thing. And, uh, and there's people everywhere, people walking around, um, you know, all directions sort of thing. It's quite a busy atmosphere, everything going on, whatever. Anyway, my parents were in a shop. They were sort of distracted, um, you know, and like my sisters are in a different shop. Everyone's sort of doing their own thing. And I'm sort of milling around, just sort of looking at different things on the shelves of shops and stuff like that. And I was outside walking along and, uh, and I heard a coin drop and I was like, oh, where's the money? Cause when you're a kid, you know, like I, I, I would get like, uh, like a dollar for pocket money per week. Like my parents were pretty cheap. Um, and so I, yeah, I'd get like a dollar, you know? And so I, I heard a coin drop. I was like, where's the money? And I found it and I picked it up and being a good little boy, I waited. I was like, I like looked around. Did anybody drop this? Anyone drop the money? And like, nobody claimed it. And it was like, I think it was like 20 cents, which is, uh, yeah, 20 cents. I was going to try and convert that into American dolls. It's about 20 cents, uh, whatever. Anyway. And so I, 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 I it was like 20 cents and I was like, I stood around and I was like, nope, no one's gonna claim this? Really? 20 cents, fine, sweet. And so I pocketed it, I was like, yes. And then I heard another coin drop. It was like a few, like a couple meters away, another coin dropped. And I was like, oh, sweet, another coin. And I looked around again. I was like, anyone gonna claim this? Seriously, nobody's seeing this? There's coins falling magically around me. And, and, and then another coin dropped. And it was like a little further down, down the pathway. And, uh, and I was like, oh, another coin. And so, and I was just beside myself with, with, you know, the fact that I'm just making bank right now, just collecting coins. It was like every boy's dream, money just falling from the sky. It was like, ah, oh, who blessed me? And, uh, and, and so these coins just started just dropping and, uh, and every coin that dropped would be like a few meters, like down this pathway. And, uh, and so I was just following the trail 
like some kid in a horror film that is just, I don't know, brought on by breadcrumb. No, that's not a horror. That's not what happens in horror films. But you know what I mean? Like just <laughs> the most obviously something is going on right now. Warning, you should know what is happening. And uh, I remember the only reason I stopped chasing these coins because the coins step kept going. They, they just kept falling. And everybody else was ignoring them except for me. I was like, I'm, I'm going to collect all these coins. And uh, I remember the only, the only reason I stopped following these coins falling was because um, I knew my parents, my mom would be pissed if I walked too far away because I was always doing that as a kid. I was just like walking around, doing my own thing, whatever. And, uh, and so she was, I knew that she was going to be pissed if I walked too far away. And so I eventually just, just stopped following it. And I was just like, whatever. I just made a whole bunch of coins. Look at this. I made like almost a whole dollar, a whole week's wage I just made in that little space there. And I was kind of gutted that I couldn't keep following the coins. Looking back on it, dude, that's creepy. Like, come on. Somebody was trying to lure me. That's the only other explanation I can have is that somebody was just having a laugh, like sitting down in a chair, or whatever, and was just like throwing coins and watching me run after them, like it was the cure for cancer. And that's the only other reason, but I'm I'm fairly certain that there was something a little bit not right going on there. So anyway, that's a little story I thought I would just share with you. I uh, sorry if. Uh, if you've been confused at what I was just doing here, I'm just painting, just painting purple. I thought it would be all right if I just didn't explain what I was doing. I'm adding some dots here, okay? And what I'm gonna do with these dots is I'm gonna smear them and then that's gonna create the look of what looks like sort of like a plant with, uh, you know, uh, you, you, you'll see it. You'll, you'll know what I'm talking about when you see it. Okay, let's just move this and uh, make a little bit of a green, okay? Make a few dots, make a few big dots. Dot, uh, dot, 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 dot and then smear it. Um, yeah, let's go like this sort of area. Okay, like that. Yeah, uh, you don't wanna to go too heavy. Bring down the strength a little bit. Okay, and the idea is to just make it look like a stem. You know how stems look. They look like this. So that's it. That's basically, yeah, that's all we're gonna do. So I'm gonna save this image, save as image. So I'll call this tutorial stem, which is a good name, I think. Oh, I'm getting really self-conscious at the length of this tutorial because I think it's going to be one of the longest ever. And again, we're making a flower. I don't know how people are going to feel about it. Okay. Okay, for the material, it's pretty basic for this one. It's just a diffuse shader. Um, and we're going to add in that image texture that we just created. So connect this up. Let's go open. And it is called Tutorial Stem. And I'm going to load in a glossy shader because I think the stem or whatever... Whatever the thing is, whatever you call it, it's a little bit shiny. Sorry, I gotta load it in. Here we go. Yeah, it's a little bit shiny. So mix shader as you normally do. Connect this up, and I'm gonna set this to be 0.1, which I think is all right. And um, yeah, roughness of 0.1 as well. I mean, you know, it's not really gonna be that visible. You could add a bump map if you really wanted to, but I'm not gonna bother. Okay, I'm just not gonna bother. I couldn't be bothered. We got it. We got. We got to move along. All right. So let's take a look at how this is with our everything in place at the moment. You can barely see it. Look at that. It's so tucked away. Why is that? Gosh. Gee. Gee, man. What did I do wrong? I mean, it's. It should be all right. Hang on. Maybe if I turn. Maybe the lighting is just so dark. I can't actually see it. Let's just make the background white. Oh. Oh. Okay. So it's too shiny. All right. I'll fix that. Okay, there you go. Okay, so you can see a seam there, which you could fix if you just went into like texture paint mode and then you could like paint over that. But anyway, overall, it looks pretty good. Okay, moving along. Okay, cool, awesome. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the origin point at this center right there. So cursor to selected, and then I'm gonna hit Control Shift Alt C, which is the most convoluted keyboard shortcut ever and then I'm going to go origin to 3d cursor and then I'm going to select all these petals here uh, not the empty and then I'm just going to press Control P and then select object keep transformation which would just keep them in their original spot so now when I move that around it's now connected to that stem cool awesome so now what we're going to be doing is modeling these guys right here which I originally called 
gosh, what did I call them? Like nectar bars or bud bars? I don't know what I called them. It was something stupid. But I think the correct term is... No, nah, I got nothing. Sorry. I thought I had... I was going to say something. No, nah, I've got nothing. I don't know what the correct term is. So somebody will definitely say in the comments what the origin, what they are actually called because people do that. We're going to move along. I'm going to add in a cylinder. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I can feel the tutorial just slipping away piece by piece. Okay, so I'm going with eight vertices, keeping it very low poly. And I'm going to scale that down like this. Okay, now the thickness of this is something that you're going to want to experiment with. And it, you're not really going to know the correct thickness to sort of go with until you sort of look at the finished render. But I think something about that thickness there should be good. And then I'm going to take in edit mode take this top row and just sort of drag it out. And I just want it, cause you can see it's sort of slightly curved. So we're just sort of going for that sort of look. So it's slightly curved out, I'm scaling that in. And then this one there as well. And however tall you make it as well, will sort of have an impact. I find that it's generally sort of about up to there, generally like that sort of height. Okay, which is good. And also whilst you're at it, even though I don't think it will really matter, I think uh, it's always better just make sure you UV unwrap things before it gets too complicated and you got a whole scene full of stuff and you realize, oh yeah, I want to texture this thing. And then you realize you didn't UV unwrap it. And yeah. Anyway, I find it's just a good habit to get into to like UV unwrap almost everything. All right, so now I'm gonna add in a UV sphere. So this is still in uh, edit mode. So it's actually still part of that same object. Now that's far too many vertices we've got there. So I'm gonna go with 12 segments by, uh, Let's go six, maybe, maybe 10, yeah, yeah, something like that. Okay, and then I'm just gonna scale that down. And so this is gonna be, of course, that little yellow bud or little yellow nectar thing. I should really look up the terms of these things before I make a tutorial, but yeah, whatever. Okay, so that little, little nugget sitting on the end there. And then, cause you can see it's kind of jagged. I'm gonna hit control one, excuse me, which is for subsurf modifier. And make sure you set the render amount for one as well. You don't want it to go too high poly and then go smooth shading. And then what I want to do is make sure that, whoops, move out the way, get out of here. Okay, so I'm sort of pointing, uh, sort of moving this down just so that it's tucked in here well so you can't sort of see it hovering. Cause again, this will be viewable by the camera with everything you can see right here. Um, okay, that's pretty good. All right, so scaling that up, pretty good, pretty good, okay. So smooth shading for that. And we're gonna give it a material. So the first one is gonna be the white stem, white stem. And basically all it's gonna be is a diffuse shader with a translucency behind it so that it picks up light that is going through it basically. So we're gonna use an add shader like this. And I want the translucency to be less, of course. So I'm just turning that down so it's a slightly gray value, but you get the point. And then give it another material. And then this one is gonna be called Yellow Bird. And this is gonna be a rich sort of goldeny color like that, which is good. And we're gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna go translucent. I'm gonna copy that same color. And then I'm gonna make it brighter, boom. And then make it an add shader. And I'm, I'm sorry, to explain why I made it brighter, I find that in all the photos I looked at online and stuff, that little yellow, whatever you call it, uh, it always picks up a lot of light. It's almost like fluorescent glowing. So I found that turning up the translucency one actually works in your favor. And if you want, you could go ahead and add in um, a noise texture and then Mix it up with this. I'm sort of going up and above what the tutorial should be, but I'm doing it anyway. I'm gonna go multiply um, and then let's copy this and then let's make that what it was before. And what this will do if I set this to 50 is this little point right here. Did I hit a sign? Okay, you gotta hit a sign for that. And then just so that we can check that it is actually the right material. Okay, you can see it is there. So by adding in that noise texture, what it should do is if you go in really close, you should be able to see, like, yeah, you can kind of see it. There's like a little bit of noise to it. It's just generally what, anyway, it's really subtle. It's almost too too subtle to bother with almost, but we, we went with it anyway. Okay, 
Cool. So um, let's pull out and we need to multiply that many times. So I'm going to hit Alt D and just, uh, just drag these around basically. Drag it around. When I was a kid in Australia, there was these, um, I don't know what they're called. They were like these red flowers and um, it was weird. You could pull the base of it off and then you just take the flower, like you rip the base of this, it's like this tiny little flower, you rip the, the, the stem of this thing off and then you suck from the bottom of the flower and it tasted like honey. And I always felt so cool doing it because I felt like I was like a bush, like bush tucker, you know, like an Aboriginal, like out in the bush. I know these flowers here, these ones, uh, these ones got some good honey in them, these ones. And so, and it was great. You just, and these flowers were everywhere. I don't know what they're called. I'm sure that Aussies that are listening, um, you know what I'm talking about. They were like red. And uh, once I was really hungry, I think I'd eaten all my lunch or something. So I just went over to a bush of these flowers. I swear I must've gone through like 30 of them, just sucking the honey out of them. It was so weird. Anyway, um, okay. So these are all like different lengths right now. Um, so not different lengths. I, I want them to be different lengths. So what I will do now is a little trick. I'm going to hit O to turn on proportional editing. And then I'm going to use random fall off, which you don't use very often. But what I'll do is you can see if you turn up that effect, like how much it affects it there, you can see that you can change sort of the heights of things, but it's actually changing the height of the pedals as well, which is sort of too much. So what I'll do is I'll just select, um, I'll select it and then I'll deselect these pedals here. And then I'll just move these guys to a new layer just for this one step, just because I'm narky. There we go. So now they've all got sort of different heights, basically. That's what I wanted to do. And now let's pull them all the way back to layer one. Boom. Awesome. Okay, now let's have a look with everything that's going on. Whoa, that is bright. Okay, turn down, turn down the... Uh, brightness and there we go okay so far so good wow i'm actually surprised it's actually coming out all right i was getting fearful that it was going to be going to look absolutely horrible but it's all right so far so far so good okay awesome good time to save right now okay so getting on 46 minutes into the tutorial we got to move things along what we're going to do now now that we've got pretty much uh, everything in order. Oh, one thing we need to do is make sure that these little stem things are also parented to our main stem, I guess, like that. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, cool. Um, and actually at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna turn on uh, real world units. So I'm gonna use metric, because I'm an Aussie we use metric units. And uh, so with this object here selected, our stem, what I want it to be, you can see that currently this is a four meter high stem. Like that's its real world unit measurement, which is obviously the largest flower in existence. So I think it's suffice to say we can definitely scale this down. Um, and now at point one of what it was before, it's now 40 centimeters high, which I think is a, a lot more doable. So that's what, I mean, even 40 centimeters is too long, but I think it's, uh, it's a lot better than what it was. So I'm now just going to take that and hit alt G, move that empty up there as well. Okay. And if you're wondering why I bothered doing that, like changing the real world units and stuff, it's just that later on when you have the camera and you're using um, like an aperture, f-stop, whatever, anything like that, um, there are certain things in Blender which will go off its real world units. And if you've got things which are largely out of proportion, then it can kind of ruin things like depth of field. Like you sort of have to go to crazy lengths in order to get it to work. So anyway, okay, I'm sort of babbling. All right, okay, front view with our camera, just like I did right then. And we're going to start positioning things. So we're going to start lining things up. So now we've got one flower in place. We've got the we've got the hard part done, I guess. Um, I'm going to split this view. I'll move this out of the way. Okay. Let's go camera view mode. Okay. All right. Now, just to explain, because there is actually some uh, some compositional stuff that is happening. Um, what I want is I want the flower 
to be um, at okay so first of all select the camera and turn on thirds so the rule going by the rule of thirds I want the center of attention to be at one of these four points that is a, uh, a little lesson to be learned by the way the more points you can get like the more interest visual interesting things you can get at those points so if you can get like two or three or even four of those with uh, something of visual interest then the picture will look even better I used to think it was like you only had to have one at like one of those points but I did a little tutorial on the Norman workshop and uh, yeah the guy was saying that the more things that you can put at these points um, the better and I was like yeah of course it makes a lot of sense anyway okay so I want the because uh, the center of attention is right there so uh, I want that to be uh, at that point there and the flower I'm pointing it to the left a little bit and up now the reason I'm doing this is what I want is for the scene for our scene um, I want obviously this flower to be the center of attention, but the, I want it to be pointing in the direction of the rest of the scene. Okay. So if you can have a look at the finished result here, you've got the flower and it's kind of pointing your direction to the left going in that kind of direction. And then you can see on this side, I've got this flower, which is pointing the direction back down there. And all of these flowers here are pointing back down at our main cherry blossom right there. So generally what it's doing is it's keeping your attention on one focal point, which is right there. So you've got it sort of, uh, and by the way, this whole arrangement of these flowers here sort of going up and around, um, that's deliberate as well. I'm, I deliberately made it so that there is a silhouette around this flower right here, which keeps it clean cut and like easier to focus on for your eyes um, because it's a, uh, there's a lot of contrast between the blue and that petal right there. So um, th these are just some things to think about. So it's not obviously necessary for if you just want to make a cherry blossom, whatever, you can do that. But I'm just trying to just throw in a couple of tips on uh, on how to get this sort of thing right. So um, yeah, by the way, I've got the finished scene. If you want to download it, you're welcome to do that. Um, yeah, anyway. Okay, so I've got the flower. That's right there. Okay, you get it. Cool. All right. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to duplicate that. So I'm going to hit Alt D, and I want to create a couple. So one around about there, and maybe move that up a little bit into the right. So something like that, and then I'll create another one, Alt D, and then let's rotate that around, and then move that up, and let's position that down there. So this is again, just making another little like sort of point of visual interest, I guess, something like that. You want to make sure that the petals aren't intersecting because they are translucent. So it will be quite obvious if they are. So you just want to sort of fix any problems that could be caused. I have to go top view, I think. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, nope. Okay, side view, pull that down. Okay, pretty good, pretty good. And at this point, I think we can go ahead and add in our branch. So by the way, you can tell that, like looking at this arrangement, like it's it's a lot of illusion. Like from the camera, it, all it needs to do is look good from the camera viewpoint. You're not gonna be showing anybody your scene set up out, well, unless you posted it on, I don't know, a forum or whatever, but it doesn't matter what the rest of the scene looks like. All that matters is that from the camera view, it looks fine. And that's all that matters. So you don't have to worry. Like I remember when I was first started learning Blender and I wanted to do everything right and model whole scenes, even though they weren't in shot and it was just a waste of time. Anyway, we should move along. Okay. So I'm going to make the branch now. So we're going to start with a cylinder. We're going to use eight vertices, um, same as before for our little stem there. And I'm gonna rotate that by 90 degrees. And then I'm just gonna grab it and holding down control, I'm just gonna make it so that it's now at that origin point right there. And now I'm gonna scale that down like that. So it's just roughly about the size of a branch, which uh, by the way, if we load in the reference image, we can see how big a branch should be for one of these things. That's how big a branch is. Look at that, roughly that sort of shape. So pretty small actually. Yeah, I guess I can make that tiny. Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna stretch that out to be about 0.9, 
along the Y axis like that. And then by the way, apply the scale because otherwise you can get weird results for different things later on. And I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to hit control R and I'm going to create some loop cuts. And the idea is I want these faces to be square. So something like that. And the reason I want them to be squared is because we're going to be using a displacement modifier. And if you don't have the uh, like square faces, like you've got some that are rectangular, then you'll have more detail in some directions than you would in other. And it sort of blows things out of proportion. Anyway, okay. Um, got a lot of stuff happening here. Okay, cool. Let's move this across. Okay, um, so what I want to do now is UV unwrap this cylinder. So if I just go into top view mode, I'm going to add a seam. So just that bottom seam right there. And then if I just delete this image right here, I can go U and then select unwrap. And you can see it's done that for us. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load in a texture that I grabbed off cgtextures.com. It's this one, actually the original is this one right here, but I took it into Photoshop and made it more brown. So we're going to use that one. So you can see that it's roughly about the same sort of look as the original reference photo that we were going off. So I'm going to UV unwrap that again. Eh, it didn't really work, whatever. Okay, so I'm just going to stretch it out. It generally is not advisable, but anyway, it doesn't really matter. Now this is a seamless texture. So it kind of helps if you sort of get things to match up right as we are doing, which is fine like that. Boom, awesome. Um, we can go ahead now and give it a material if you want to. Well, you should, I guess, <laughs> an image texture. So go ahead, load this in, use that same colored uh, texture that we just, you know, whatever, you know the name of it, Bark Tropical. And I'm gonna use a glossy shader to load this in and then go mix shader, drag and drag and drag. And I'm gonna set this, um, the glossy amount to like something really small, like 0 0.02. And the glossy value, I'm gonna leave that at 0 0.2 like that as well. So if you go into rendered view mode, you should now see that we have the texture, but I want there to be a bit more detail to it. So I'm going to, first of all, let's go smooth shading and I'm going to add in a subsurf modifier. I'll just move this over just so you can see what's actually happening now. Cause this part's pretty cool. Um, I'm going to turn the subsurf up to three and I'm now I'm going to add in a displacement modifier. Boom. And I'm going to add a new texture. That is a weird, weird look. That's cool if you want to make an alien scene. That's an interesting way of doing that. <laughs> um, so go to the texture panel and then here, make sure that you have selected the displacement texture. Now for the displacement texture, I'm going to use an image. I'm going to click open. And the image that I'm going to use is one that I generated specifically for this. So all I did was I took that, that image texture. I took it into um, using crazy bump and I created a displacement texture, which is basically a grayscale, really softened version of the original texture. So now I hit open for that. And then now if I go back to here, and if I set the texture coordinates to be UV, ta -da! see, I told you it would look lovely. Doesn't that look lovely? So let's turn down the strength, okay? Cause that is blowing it way out of proportion. Okay. So there we go. You can sort of see, uh, maybe we need more, I, know, I, know, I guess, uh, I think it's actually a little bit stretched along the Y axis. There we go. Okay, cool. Awesome. All right. Um, how many subdivision levels do we want to go? I think three will be fine. Now in order to stretch it out so that it is using, so that it looks like a branch, um, I'm going to use an array modifier. So I'm going to place that at the very front. I'm going to apply the rotation so that we've got the right rotation. Um, and I'm going to hit zero for the X and then for Y, I'm going to make it one. And there you go. And then make sure you check merge as well. And then now you turn that up and that can now be however long you want your branch to be. So in this instance, having a look at the camera view, um, <laughs> as I said at the start, I mean, come on, what does this look like? You cannot say that that does not look like a turd. I Seriously, I mean, come on. Don't even deny it. Don't try and be high class and say, no, no, no. Don't be so potty mouth. No, come on. That That's a turd right there. If there ever was one, that is it. Okay. All right. Um, so, 
Uh, such a child. All right. Um, so I want that to be sort of in the camera view, like a little bit. So I'll make it so that it's positioned sort of like that, I guess. Yeah, that's pretty good. Maybe move it over slightly and then rotate it a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Something like that. Now you can add in bends and stuff. Uh, bends in the branches, not the Mercedes Benz. Um, if you want, it's up to you, but yeah, whatever, that's fine. Um, so yeah, so that's that portion of it now done. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna be adding in the stuff on the left-hand side, which is the branches. So all of those little, yeah, the stuff in the original photo, which is on the left-hand side. So this is the fun part. Um, or could be the frustrating part, really depends. <laughs> so first things first, um, I'm gonna take one of these flowers right here. I'm going to hit Shift D so that it's its own separate entity instead of using the same stuff as before. I'm gonna move it to layer two, separate layer all by itself. And first things first is I'm gonna clear its rotation. So I'm gonna make it so that it's standing upright. And what I want to do is I want to make a low poly version of this flower because currently it's got too much subsurf and a bunch of other stuff happening. So um, yeah, basically let's turn down the subsurf for this to be, yeah, like 0.1 like that. And now I'm going to select all of these one by one and then hit control L and then select modifiers. And then for these ones, I think these are already using the right subsurf because basically what we're going to do is we're going to make this a... Um, one solid single object. Okay, so um, for the stem, we need to apply the solidifier like that. Okay, and the displacement. Yeah, it doesn't really matter about the displacement. Um, I've got a sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Whew. Okay, so for all of these objects here, I'm gonna select the stem last and I'm gonna hit Control J. And if you've done it right, you shouldn't see any big changes happening. Um, it should look pretty fine. Okay, cool. So that is now one object. So we can now go ahead and like duplicate that, displace it. And I feel another sneeze coming on. <coughs> <coughs> oh, sorry. Hopefully that's not too loud for the microphone. Oh, good. At the one hour mark, another reminder. <sighs> yeah, I'm gonna have to pause the recording. Excuse me, I'm gonna have to sneeze again. <laughs> I'm back, Ooh, okay. I opened the window, got some fresh air. All right, let's carry on. So, got one flower. Let's go ahead and grab this branch, this guy right here, hit Shift D and move it to layer two. So basically layer two is gonna have all our stuff, the background stuff basically. Um, it's gonna, yeah, be that, okay. So for this branch, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna clear its rotation, so yeah like that. And what I want to do is I'm going to stretch out the length of it because I want it to be a little bit longer. Yeah, something like that, I think, maybe pretty good. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm just going to create like a like a part, make it look some like some sort of semblance of a branch, you know. Um, yeah, basically like that. Okay, I've reopened the window, by the way. So sorry if you can hear a bit of a uh, atmospheric noise, what, what do you call it? Acoustic, I don't know. Noise, which is not, doesn't have a, uh, whatever. I should stop talking. <laughs> All right, okay, so cherry blossom uh, in relation to the size of this branch. Maybe we can scale that down a little bit. I don't think we'll get into too much trouble for that. Yeah, that should be fine. Okay, so what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm gonna create some bunches of cherry blossoms because I found, having a look at the reference photo, which is no longer here, let's just quickly load that back in, um, but cherry blossoms generally are in bunches. Um, so this point here, you've got like a load of like 20 or 30 or whatever, but generally they're in like lots of like four or five together. Um, and they're sort of, yeah, basically like that. So I'm gonna create a few little bunches there. Now, generally, as you can see with the reference here, each little bunch should have its own little stem sticking out. But from, again, having a look here, you can't tell looking at the finished image that anything is wrong, it doesn't matter. So we're gonna use a little bit of creative licensing and we're just gonna make them sprout directly out of this branch. Okay, so with this, uh, with this little flower here selected, I'm gonna hit Alt D. Okay, 
Alt D, by the way, besides all like making it so that it shares the same like object data as he, the others, um, it also reduces the uh, the size of your Blender file when it's saved because you've actually got less data that Blender actually needs to save because it's just a copy of something else. So it's not actually adding anything to it. So yeah, there have been times where I had like a nature scene, which is like a forest or something. And I hit shift D for like everything, like all the logs and the grass and everything like that. And uh, I just made like each one was its own separate little object or whatever. And the file ended up being like, you know, gigabyte two two or three gigabytes i don't know something ridiculous and then i did it again but i used alt d instead of shift d and the file was like 100 megabytes so yeah it does really matter so alt d shift d you got to know when to use them and uh yeah that's pretty much all i can say about that i think it, i think i can tell a story now because this is uh pretty repetitive uh recently it was my wife's birthday so for her birthday, we decided to go to Busan, which is basically, it's like the Hawaii of Korea. It's like a the only nice beach in the whole country, basically. It's at the bottom of Korea, nice and close to Japan and whatever. It's really nice. We went there. We were having a good time. We went and saw the beach, everything like that. And uh, at nighttime, she, uh, my wife wanted to go and have some drinks together. So we went to a bar. We found this nice little trendy looking bar. Uh, it was one of those fancy bars where like, you know, the bartender does like the, the flippy thing, like like flipping the uh, bottles around in the air. The music is trendy. Everything's made of wood. I don't know why that makes it trendy, but it's like, you know, like vintage. It's got like writing on the wall and uh, the table glows because it's got like lights in it and everything. Everybody in there is young and, uh, and you know, people like checking each other out, whatever. It's like, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a nice sort of atmosphere. And, uh, and so we were having a couple of drinks there. We we're just chatting at the table by ourselves, whatever. And then um, in walked in two elderly women. Uh, I say elderly, they were about 55 years old. Um, I, I apologize, by the way, if you're watching this and you're 55 and you're offended that I called you elderly. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how to say, I don't know how to put this lightly. Uh, it's Asian elderly. And um, if you haven't seen the average Asian aging process, it goes like for most of their life, they look about 20 and then suddenly they look 80. It's just like an overnight thing something I have uh, have to look forward to with my wife. Anyway, we're getting off topic. <clears throat> Let's go back. Um, so anyway, so this elderly couple, not couple, these two elderly women, they walked into the bar and I remember thinking like, oh, man, who do they think they are? Coming to this, why did they have to come to this bar? This bar was trendy and now it's not. And then I had to stop myself. I was like, man, how rude am I? Like. These these two women are just out by themselves and they have every right to go to whatever bar they want to. Sure, it's weird. And every other person in the bar was obviously, you know, 20 or 30, whatever. And sure, it's weird for them to want to go to this type of bar, but it's they had every right. So I sort of felt guilty for a while. Like, you know, I was like, oh man, how could I judge them? You know, like they can do whatever they want. And I felt that judgment and I, I felt guilty until they sat down next to us and started farting. There's no easy way to, to say it. They just started just unloading. Like, and I say started because I don't know when they stopped because we left. We, and we were there for like another 10 minutes braving our way through it. It was, I mean, a lot of emotions, first of all. The first one was denial. It was like, no, nah, it's not them. It can't be them. Then it was acceptance. Yes, it's clearly them. They're the only ones within the, the fart diameter. Uh, and then and then it was sort of like anger. Like, why are they farting? Come on, seriously. Uh, and then it was just defeat. We just sculled our drinks and uh, and we just left. We just left the bar. Disappointed. Um, and uh, I don't know. It was sort of like, you know, sometimes your original prejudice, your original gut reaction actually turns out to be true. So that is the moral of the story. It's a, it's a very negative story. 
I don't mean to rag on those people, but I mean, come on, you don't fart up a bar. That's just uncalled for. Who does that? I mean, it. <laughs> that's just not right. I mean, if you've ever been to a club, you've ever been to a bar, you're on the dance floor. Everybody knows this, right? You can fart and nobody will know who it was. Nobody is going to like point the finger at you for farting on the dance floor. But you don't do it. Like, it, it happens. You're on the dance floor, you're doing your thing, and then suddenly it's just, it just hits you like a brick. It's like, oh, wow. Seriously. Okay, somebody just farted. Everybody can smell it. Everybody's like, oh, God. And, and everyone just like, just splits. The dance floor is now ruined. You can't dance through the cloud. It, it just doesn't work. You know, the atmosphere is gone. But again, you can get away with it, you know, but you shouldn't do it. So there are certain things which you can get away with, but you shouldn't do it. And that is one of those things. Anyway, that was a fairly negative story. Um, again, I do apologize for those women, but you know, you brought it upon yourselves. Uh, yeah, anyway, let's move along. So. If you, uh, if you weren't sort of following what I was just doing then, um, basically, just distributing the flowers across the branch. And that is about it. Um, so you can see that it's sort of like slowing down, like it's really hard for me to, like the viewport is sort of like dragging it down. So I'm gonna turn down the view of the subsurf for first of all the branch, so that there's less polys for it to, uh, to actually render. And then I'm going to select one of these flowers. I'm going to turn the view for it down to zero. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything except for the branch. And then I'm going to hit control L and then I'm going to select modifiers. And what that's done is it's now made all of them so that they that now basically don't display the subserve. And you can see that now it's a lot easier for me to uh, navigate the viewport. Cool. Awesome. So now we've done that. If we now have a look through our, yeah, 3D view. You know, I could probably like move this way down now because we're sort of uh, getting to the end of it. Thankfully, man alive, this tutorial is ragging on a bit. Um, so what I want to do now is, um, is I want to create um, sort of an edge to the photograph. Okay. So again, having a look at our finished image here, um, it's sort of, um, what would you say? It's creating like a flow point. Like your eyes are sort of going around in that direction. The main focus is right here, but your eyes are sort of going around there. So I want there to be a gap where there is the sky, like this blue sky in between the flowers. And then I want there to be the branches all on this side, basically. So that is the kind of look that we are going for. Okay. So, um, okay. Let's just sort of bring this back a little bit. I think we could pull that there. Okay. And then I'm going to hit Alt D, duplicate that, pull that into the background there. And then I'm going to rotate that a little bit. And I think about that should actually probably do it. I think I use like three or four or five branches of different flowers for the my final one. But I think this will actually do it. This is, uh, it's actually not bad. I think it's actually going to work for me. Again, just want to make it so that it's drawing your drawing your line, like so that you, your eyes don't leave this flower, like it doesn't leave the scene. You want there to, you know, all the attention to be on whatever's going on up there. Uh, I might actually grab just this bunch of flowers and uh, I'll just duplicate it and I'll just fill that little gap that's going on right there. And I'll just rotate that around, 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 boom. Mm, there you go. Okay, something like that, okay. Cool. Awesome. I think we're actually almost at the end. Finally, would you believe it? Whew. All right. Now for the magic for the foreground, I want there to be a few petals, which are catching the light and they are out of focus. So they're going to be really close to the camera. So I'm going to grab this petal duplicate it, alt D and you can see that it's now parented to this stem because all of them are, I'm going to hit alt P and I'm gonna clear the parent and keep its transformation so it doesn't move anywhere else. And now, if we go into top view mode, I'm gonna move this really close to the camera, double tap R so that I can rotate this around quite drastically. Okay, move this in, let's double tap R again. Yeah, there we go, something like that. 
And this is to basically just sort of clip off because you don't want there to have like this big sky opening right there. So this is to sort of hide that essentially. And I'll duplicate it again. And this is gonna be for this one right here. And then I'm gonna duplicate it one more time. And that's for that one right there. I think I might actually take this flower that's down here. I'll just move it up slightly. Cause I do actually want it in the shot. Uh, I think it was probably better the way it was before actually. All right, move that over a little bit, rotate it. Let's pull you down a little bit. There we go. Okay, something like that. And then hide some of that. Just a little bit. Okay, awesome. All right, I think we can almost render it, you know? Uh, one final thing though, we've got to add in the sky background, okay? Because currently the background is gray, which is not good. So we're gonna go, this is in the world settings here. And we're going to, first of all, use nodes, then environment texture, and then click open. Now I'm gonna use an HDR, which is actually from the upcoming course the Architecture Academy. So it's a course that I'm working on at the moment, sort of keeping it all hush hush. But uh, part, one of the bonuses for the Architecture Academy is a whole bunch of HDR images. So I'm gonna use one of them right now and I'm gonna give it to you as a little sort of uh, pre-release gift. Um, it's uh, one of the 30 that's gonna be included in the course. Um, and basically it looks like, oh man, I'm gonna have to open it up. It's probably gonna take me a while to find it. Uh, bonuses HDR it looks like this that so it's um, the ground you don't really care about it's the sky that you want really so this is just to light a scene so you can light a scene with just an HDR by itself and um, it really works well for just just about everything for any outdoor scene if you if you're not using HDRs for outdoor scenes you're missing out the sooner you start using them, the sooner you realize, like, that's the way to go. If you want photorealism, you got to start using HDRs. Um, I'm just in love with them at the moment. So um, so we're going to be using this. So I'll show you how it looks now in, uh, in our render. If we just go to a new layer by itself, then we should be able to see um, the HDR. There we go. So if we now, you can see, if I pan around, you can see everything that we've got going on. So that's cool. So that now will light our scene. So the strength of it is set to one, which is the default value, which is fine because it's the correct value. So we're gonna leave it as that. But one thing I'm gonna change though, is because currently you've got all this grass down here, which I don't want. So I'm gonna to go to the world settings. Okay, this is in the node editor. I can move that out the way, I guess. And I'm gonna add in a texture coordinate node and then a mapping node and uh, oh, make sure you go generated, put that into the mapping and then select the mapping into the environment texture like that. And then now if you go rotation, you can actually rotate this. So if the sky is in the wrong direction, you can like rotate it basically. But actually the Z is actually fine. So I'm gonna keep that the way it is. But what I wanna do, because the sun is behind the camera right now, so that's fine. What I wanna do is I actually want to position this so that the grass is out of the shot. So basically, Boom, like that. And that's it, so that's all we need to do. Okay, cool. So let's go back into solid view mode, bring in the rest of our scene here. I'm gonna move that over just a little bit. I'm gonna split the view. So this is where really, where um, I guess you're gonna have to spend a bit of time sort of fixing various things. Um, because in scenes like this, you get this sort of stuff like overlapping petals and, you know, you want it to work and it's not working and it's just a matter of just pushing and moving things around um, until it works basically. So um, I could do it all whilst I'm recording right now, but I think, in fact, I know it's gonna be very boring for you all. So we're not gonna do that. I'm just gonna roughly stitch this together as best I can and then we're just gonna leave it up to your imagination to figure out what to do for the rest of it because uh, I'm pretty sure you get it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Okay, that's as best I can do. I'm gonna grab this little bunch of flowers up there again and I'm gonna hit Alt D. And what I'll do is I'm gonna bring them out to be over here and then let's drag it down 
And I'm just going to position these just off to the side here. Just so that you've got something in the background there which looks makes it look a little bit more official. And I'll move that stick, our turd log. I'll move that up a little bit as well. Like that. Boom. Awesome. Okay. And also, what I might do, this is something that I did for my final scene as well. I'm going to take that flower there, rotate it. And this is going to be one that's a little bit closer to the camera. And this is the one which is going to be sort of pointing the, uh, the view back to our flower over here. So it's a little bit closer to the camera, but it's like that, sort of pointing downwards. And I'm going to position it about there. So because of the direction of these little nectar pod things, <laughs> whatever they are called, um, they're pointing up in that direction. So this one here will help to point it back down again. Just a little compositional little thing there. Okay, all right, let's just drag this up just so that it's at the proper rule of thirds. Yeah, now it's sort of exposed that. Just delete that pedal. Now the turd log isn't... Okay, you, you can see what I mean. I mean, for my final scene, it was just a whole bunch of pushing and pulling around to sort of make it work, but I think you get the idea. Let's give it a render now. I'm gonna go, let's go 100 samples. I'm going to set the performance 256 by 256, which is generally the best tiling. And let's see how that renders. So I'll pause it and we'll see how it looks when it finishes. Okay, so this is the finished render, um, which looks a little bit different than uh, we had hoped, isn't it? Yes. So um, there's a few things we need to change. I've forgotten to uh, properly address it. Um, we added in a sun lamp really early on in the tutorial and I knew I was going to forget it, and I did. Um, so the sun lamp, I want that, I need it positioned in a way like this so that these front petals, the ones that our camera are right here, um, are sort of casting a little bit of a shadow. So I guess it needs to be kind of pointed backwards onto itself a little bit. So something like that. So making it look like the sun is like directly overhead and it's casting a bit of a shadow. So I'm going with a two centimeter shadow, or if you're not using the uh, metric units or whatever, it'll be 0 0.02 for the sun. And I'm going to set the strength of the sun to three. So that'll help it sort of pop a little bit more. And I'm going to set the color of the sun to be slightly yellow. You don't want to go too yellow because generally the sun isn't actually that yellow, believe it or not. It's more of a uh, colder color, but just the way our eyes perceive things. Anyway, we won't get into that. That's a different tutorial. Um, and our camera, we actually didn't set a focal point. So everything is in focus right now. And you can see how horrible that looks. So I want the focus to be on our flower right here. So an easy way to do that is to actually just select one of these guys right here. And you can see the name of it in the bottom left hand corner is cylinder.003. So if you select the camera, then go to focus. Then if I just go cylinder, I can go cylinder.003. And now I'm gonna use an f-stop of 5.6, which I've found to work quite well. And also I've got a little bit of, uh, a little bit of interference happening with, the, um, with our flower. So if I just go to this view, and let's just go into rendered view mode, and we'll just see what the problem appears to be. I think it's actually this part, this stem thing that's actually sort of pushing through some of that, um, uh, some of the petals there. So if I just grab these like this, and if I just pull these back a little bit, there we go. That's fixed it essentially, almost pull it back a little bit further. And there we go. Yeah. Okay. So that's now fixed that little problem and the shadow of the sun. It's casting seems to be casting in the right direction. Oh, one other thing I was going to fix as well for the, um, for the material of our translucency shader or whatever here. Um, I want the translucency because generally what you find is, uh, especially with plants um, in general, like petals and stuff, like if you, if you had a look at a red flower and you look at it from the front and then you have a look at it from behind where the sun is shining through it, you generally find that on the reverse side of it, it's more saturated. Um, and I think that's basically because it's passing through more cells. So it's picking up more color basically. So for this point right here, you've got the translucency, which is dulling it down to a 0.6 value, which is correct. Um, but I actually want it to be more saturated. 
So I'm turning up the saturation for the translucency and that will, I think, give it a more, sort of make it pop a little bit more. So that will definitely help for that. So that's gonna do that. And one other thing as well, um, I want the petals to be a little bit pinker in color. So I'm gonna add in a mix RGB node, this guy right here. And I'm gonna set this bottom color here to be a nice pink color like that. You can see the, the effect it's having. And if I set this uh, blending mode to be color, and then I turn down this factor value, if I set that to be 0.1, that's roughly the value that I sort of want to go for. So something like that is pretty good. I, the turd is, uh, is a little bit too prominent <laughs> in the background here. So I might actually uh, hide it with one of our flowers here. So if I just have a look at it through the viewport, let's position the flower to be about there, rotate that around. There we go, I've sort of fixed it, I guess, a little bit. Again, one of those things you can sort of play with, just like that. And there we go, I think we're, we're just about there, guys. It's been a long tutorial. It's been a very, very long tutorial, but I think we're just about done. So you know what, I'm gonna give it a proper render give it some justice. Let's go 100% and let's render it and we'll see how that looks. Okay, and seven minutes later we have our final render, which is what you can see right here. So uh, if I was to re-render this, which I'm not gonna bother, but I would probably uh, turn the f-stop down maybe to three, I think, because uh, the depth of field is in the front here, the foreground and at the back, isn't to the extreme that I want it to be. I want it to be more out of focus. And also, I think there's a fair bit of a gap between, like there's, there's a lot of sky in this, uh, in this render here. Whereas with my original, uh, well, it's gone now, but whatever, the original is a little bit tighter. So I'd probably move these branches over a little bit more to sort of make it a little bit tighter. But anyway, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this finished um, image here. Let's just call this tutorial. And I'm gonna open it up in Photoshop and I'm gonna show you um, my process for how I turned it, sort of make it look a little bit better, basically. Uh, this is from one of my trial attempts. You can see it looks a little bit crap. Okay, so I'm gonna load it in, what's it called, render, this guy? No, that's not it, where, where is it, hang on. It's probably called tutorial. Tutorial, 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 tutorial. Hey, hey, there we go, okay. Cool, so one thing, uh, a tool that I use is called Magic Bullet. Now, I know that not everybody has this tool. The only reason I'm showing it is because um, I know some people might wanna know of these different tools that are out there um, and they wanna, I don't know, maybe if you are in the interest of buying things which are gonna help you, you might be interested in buying this program. Um, basically, it allows you to very quickly add in post-processing stuff. You can change a whole bunch of different looks um, from all sorts of different things. Um, and then you've got a whole range of different tools over here. Um, you know, all these different yeah, there's a whole bunch of different stuff. Now, I should say a lot of the stuff that you can see here um, is actually doable using the um, uh, compositor in Blender. Um, it's, again, it's not anything special that I'm showing you here. It's, um, but it is just a way of doing things. So that's why I'm showing it basically. So basically what I did for mine is I used the diffuse, I did this diffusion thing, which will give everything a slight glow. So you can sort of change the amount of glow and sort of like which parts of it receive the glow. So I want it to be only on the highlighted part. So basically these parts right there, you could turn up the grade, sort of make it a little bit sort of softish sort of look. Um, and if you wanted to as well, you could also add in like a spot exposure. You could drag this in and then you could position it like, I don't know, on this flower here and you could turn up the light. I don't know why you would do that. It's kind of silly. Why am I doing this? <laughs> No, we won't use the spot exposure. It's sometimes helpful, but not in this instance, so we won't use it. So uh, one of the ones I use is uh, auto shoulder, which will sort of, I don't know, it sort of like takes the edge, the range of things. Um, hue and saturation, uh, actually saturation I've got already. So turn down the saturation a little bit. I found it works out a little bit better, so something like that. And then I also use the vignette. Now if I can find where the vignette is, that would be helpful. 
Vignette, vignette, wherever you are, come out, there you are. Cool, so I throw this guy in, um, and you scale up the spread, no, oh yeah, there we go. Cool, so you want it to be there, and then you can position this there. The cool thing about, you know, using this program as opposed to, um, you know, whatever Blender has, is that you can, you know, very quickly see the results in real time, um, and it's just a method for doing things. So again, I know some people don't like it when I use commercial software and I use it in the tutorial. I'm not saying everybody go out there, buy this. I'm not sponsored by Magic Bullet. Don't, there's no conspiracy or anything like that. It's just a tool that I've started to use. I like it, so I'm just sharing it with you. Um, now, one other thing I'm gonna do to sort of give the photo, uh, give the render like a different like sort of make the colors pop a little bit. Um, this is what the uh, the finished one looks like. Again, this one right here. Um, you can see that this area here on the right hand side has a little bit of a purplish color to it. And then up here, it's a little bit blue and stuff like that. This is another version I did. You can see here, it's a, a lot more purple. Um, and that's what I'm gonna do right now. So I'm just using a brush. Now, so the first color I've selected is just a solid blue. Okay, I'm gonna add a new layer. And what I will do is I will just paint up here in the top right hand corner, just blue like that. And then I'm gonna flip the colors. I'm gonna change this to be maybe a little bit more purpley like that. And I'm just gonna color, let's just go right there, boom. And then I might do it a little bit in the corner as well, just up there. And I might also, just in the bottom left hand corner, I'll do something there as well. And then I'm gonna change the o, um, the blending type to be overlay. And then I'm just gonna turn down the opacity of those. So you can see that I think the blue up in the top left hand corner is a bit much. So I'll just turn that down a little bit. Okay. Okay, but you can sort of see how you can uh, have a bit of fun with this. It just sort of gives it not you don't want to not vintage, but you know it gives it a bit of styling, a bit of variation to the color, so everything's not the same big blasted pink color that it was before. Um, and you know, and you can do a bit of other things as well. I think I might actually turn up the saturation now after I just turned it down before, but um, you know, you get the picture. You can have a bit of fun with it. Uh, I also do uh, as a general rule of thumb, I do an unsharpened mask which will um, just make things pop a little bit. You know, it'll just catch the detail and it will bring it out generally. Yeah, that's too much. You wanna drag that down a little bit. Okay. Generally, the unsharpened mask is really good for catching like fine amounts of detail in the texture, like in this texture of this flower there and then down there it'll sort of bring that out. I generally find that's what it's good for. And then as well, whilst I'm at it, because you know what? I don't think this tutorial could be any longer. Let's just drag it out. Let's go all the way. <laughs> uh, sometimes I use a reduced noise, uh, but uh, I can. you can see that it's actually taken away a lot of the detail from this front flower here. So I'm gonna just not bother with that. You could use like a mask if you wanted to, but anyway, you get the picture guys. That's it, that's how this scene is created. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you uh, caught a few things from it. And uh, maybe next Valentine's Day, you can create a lovely card for your admirer, your wife, your girlfriend, whatever. Um, I don't know, it's a little bit off. It's sort of a weird timing for me to put this out, but I was inspired by the recent cherry blossom season, so I decided to make a tutorial on it. Hope you enjoyed it, and thank you for sticking through to the end if you made it this far. Well done. It is probably my longest tutorial in history. So that's it. Thanks very much for watching, and I will see you next time.